Prestwick St. Nicholas is the 26th oldest golf course in the world. Old Tom Morris was a founder member of the Lynx course that hugs the coastline of the Firth of Clyde. Right, so after losing a ball on the first hole, I thought we ain't starting there. So we're starting on the second tee and uh, we're at Presswick St. Nicholas Golf Club. And first of all, that's what you call a view. That's the Isle of Arran over there. Um, clubhouse in a backdrop, which is uh, where we just teed off from. And like I said, still on this second tee. Um, par three, 170 odd into the breeze. I've actually hit one onto the green here, but again, we're gonna talk about these buildings over here very shortly, but again, what seems to be a great golf course that awaits on uh, on this Ayrshire coastline and I'm excited to get going. Right, so Murray, we've got two buildings behind us that, um, well, they've been here a while. And what's a, a what's while. A, what, what are they? They're the salt pans. Uh, they date back to 1763, so they're pretty much an icon in the course. Um, they were actually owned uh, or built, I suppose, the land was owned by a guy called Oswald from Ock and Crove, just in land from here. He was, all American children know him, which is amazing that, you know, hardly anybody in the UK knows him. He was the chap that the British government decided to uh, sign the Treaty of Paris for in 1783. And he was the one who actually said to the Americans, why don't we call your colonies the United States? So really... And he was the landowner? He was the landowner for here. And wow. These salt pans, uh, they brought the water from the sea up into the lower floor here. There's a vaulted ceiling and they basically set fire to the water in a heavy iron pan. Yeah. Um, drove off all the, uh, the water and the salt was left. They bagged the salt and then sold it because it was the only thing they could really use for yeah. preserving meat and, and fish at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of coal around here as well and they used to pick a lot of the coal off the, off the seashore. A um, little bit more expensive this coal because it was contaminated with salt but they used that to try and sort of burn the furnaces here. And how long ago would that have ceased to exist then in terms of... Uh... Probably um, late, 18, so late 1860s, 1870s yeah. is an active thing but people were living in them up until probably the sort of 1940s. Were they? Yeah. They held a great position on the course and it's a great sort of a, almost an iconic part of the course isn't yeah. it visually? It's our responsibility to look after them. We put a little bit of money away just in case things need to fixed with them. them but uh, thankfully everything's okay with it so yeah. far. And we're stood on what is the third green? Third green. Not a bad yep. view off here. It's pretty good uh, at least you can see the weather coming from all directions. Yeah <laughs> well we better get moving I think there's a bit of rain on its way. <laughs> just a little bit. The sea view never leaves, nor does Elsa Craig or the Isle of Arran. Rolling fairways, runoffs, strategic bunkering and gorse. Throw in a bit of a breeze and Presswick will ask a question. It's a great view off 11. In all fairness, from the tee boxes that we just recorded at every vantage point, we're going to run right along the, uh, along the sea and the beach front. There's a bit of a glimmer of sun and, and we found the fairway, so a glimmer of hope as well. I 
that's a great strike. Just moving a little bit to the left, but it's a lovely ball. Uh, is it? Bunker. Right, I'm going to change my mind then, so we've got... I'll tell you what, yeah, there's a, a bunker behind the pin. There's a bunker to the left of the pin. There's a bunker that I went in. There's a bunker on the right <laughs> that you <laughs> He can tells see. me this just before the tee off. There's a, right, so, yeah. so that's seven bunkers? Uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop exaggerating, Adam. <laughs> There's only five. <laughs> right. Safe areas to the right and then it comes down. Can you make it? Yep. That's, that's not bad happy with that. You know, I always talk about or try to talk about the history of golf clubs and uh, often it's related to what happened in years gone by in terms of change of design and uh, different people that come and go at golf clubs and how they change and evolve but this a lot of golf courses were impacted on uh, by the war a lot of the lands were used uh, for different purposes these are trenches that soldiers would practice effectively in before they were shipped off to war into battle in the first world war apparently there's a lot of them here, obviously a lot deeper than this but they'd be in these trenches um and used as literally a practice battleground and it's uh it's a bit eerie in a way isn't it? it's a bit weird but that's what this land was used for many many years ago So on to 15, nearing the end. The weather has uh, certainly uh, brightened up a lot for us. Uh, interesting par four, actually 15, just 260 yards from the yellow tees that we played it. Um, but again, uh, still ask questions of your game, and that's uh, one of the key features of this course. There's a lot of change in terms of, uh, or variation rather, in terms of the different holes and what they ask of your game. And it's certainly not a case of uh, picking driver up off every tee and a short iron in there's a lot of thinking to be done and uh, with any links track you miss the greens and uh, you've got to be thinking about how you're going to get up and down and this hole we're coming to now 15 is just uh, oh, it's just stunning to look at i'll flip the camera around and then what i'm looking at and then we'll get a, a few close-ups of it a few a few better looking images than the one i'm able to provide you with now but that's what i'm looking at the salt pans are in the distance that's the Tea, uh, flag on the horizon, uh, numerous bunkers, and you will notice if it's in view, is uh, to the right there is uh, is my ball. I'll have a decent tee shot.
why we've made our way to the 18. And I said when I arrived in the car park and seeing how tight it was, and my car is in is in it, it's not where it's I in told danger. You to park it. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> this is you've told me someone said this is the the, the, the most treacherous hole. Well, Bunkard put it as the 43rd, uh, probably the most terrifying. I yeah, don't know. Uh, I'm with him on that. But effectively, w w what have you got? You've got the car park going all the way up the right. We've got a clubhouse. You've got a clubhouse, which has taken quite a few knocks. Um, you have got the 17th fairway coming down the left hand side. Uh, you've got a hidden bunker on the front left at around about 200 and probably 210 yards, maybe something like that. So what are we playing to green, centre green? Uh, 203 at the moment uh, off this tee. Um, back tee, you're up around 225. And it's worth mentioning, we have got a bit of a breeze in, even now, this and it's not doing it, a lot. This but isn't a breeze. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, well, I'll, I'll let you lead the way. Okay. <laughs> I've got a, a little bit of a mini driver. Mm -hmm. and, uh, isn't that an actress? Yes. <laughs> I'm at, at the moment I'm bailing out left. Okay. Oh no, that's perfect. Perfect shot. Will we get there? Oh. Yeah, pretty good. That's not bad. Well, I'm happy with that. I've well, I'm seen, in the van. I've never seen Mini Driver on the 18th green, but yeah, well, there, there you go. I'm there you go. <laughs> Well, first of all, Murray, thank you for uh, for your company. Oh, well, no, thank you for playing the course so well. <laughs> oh, well, we did all right in the end. Yeah, after a bad start, lost the ball off the first tee, yeah. and then it got better from there. It couldn't get any worse. So Every, that's everybody the... has ups and downs on this yeah. course. But uh... no, it was very enjoyable. Great mix of holes, great variety of holes. Um, and and it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's a fair challenge, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the longest of courses, but to be fair, the, the variety of holes that yeah. we've got, some blind holes, uh, the short holes are not that short. No, no. Um, and the greens are actually not that large either. So you really have to be quite accurate on your way around. So, some great new tee boxes, but there's a lot of tee boxes that got great sort of uh, elevation, and, and therefore the, you, you get the best of these yeah, views. Yeah, the, the infinity tees that we've put in now, I think, are, are, are something that everybody's going to rave about when they get a chance to come around, yeah, yeah. around here and play. Now, I mean, the, the things that I was expecting, the, the greens were, were fantastic, great nick and all them kind of things. Thank you. Were very, very good indeed. Pass but, it on uh, to the guys. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a really good day. And uh, we've got a bit of history thrown in there as well. That's, that's what we're about. I mean, you know, as, as we talked about in the way around, old Tom Morris was a, a founding member yeah, yeah. of the club. And uh, we, there was no evidence to say that he came here to have a look and see what it was like after his friend had laid it out. But uh, you got to believe with the, the transport at that time, it might have been one of the last journeys that he did. So, yeah, no, uh, And with the bicentennial next year yeah. uh, for old Tom Morris's birthday, we'll be doing some celebrations on that as well. Fantastic. Well, we might come back then. Well, you're very welcome anytime. No, it's brilliant. Thank you, Murray. We can't shake hands, unfortunately. Can't shake hands, we're, we're no. Still in, but, uh, we're still in post-COVID or yeah, post-lockdown. Yeah, post-lockdown, but uh, when you come back, we'll, uh, we'll do all that. Yeah, good stuff. Excellent. Thank you.